storyteller left this evening. Um, and she is a music teacher and a mother of two musical children. Yes. Um, she is also the musical director of Haven Academy of the Arts in Pico Union District that does musicals. And she has studied creative writing with several noted teachers, and in fact, including one of our other story uh, um, tellers this evening, Terry Silverman. So um, please welcome Susan Porter. I'm so glad to see you. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad to see you. If you knew Susie like I know Susie, oh, 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 what a gal. Wake up, little Susie, wake up. When I was little, my family sang Susie songs, and hearing my name in those songs made me feel important. I felt like the star of the family. I instantly took on that role, it just felt right. <laughs> You're the spirit of Christmas, the star on the tree. You're the Easter bunny to daddy and me. My parents' marriage was dysfunctional at best and downright violent at worst. But when we all sang together in the car, we felt like a happy family. We sang songs like, California, here I come, and hello, Dolly, well, hello, Dolly. A few years after my parents' divorce, in 1967, I was in the second grade. And every kid in my class took a turn getting up in front of the room and singing, I'm a little teapot. And I remember clearly the day it was my turn to get up in front of everybody. I got up in front of the classroom and I felt this excitement, this rush that I never felt before. I put my hand on my hip and my other hand in the air and I began to sing. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, hear me shout, tip me over, pour me out. At that moment, in Mrs. Dormandy's second grade class, I knew I was a performer. I felt an electricity that I had never experienced. Everyone was watching me and I liked it. And even at that young age, I knew my version of Little Teapot really rocked. <laughs> you know, you know when you're good when you got it, right? <laughs> it was the early 70s, and I was sitting in my purple bedroom in the projects on Peardis Avenue in the west side of Cleveland. I was singing along with Donny Osmond. And they call it puppy love is the answer up above. How a young heart really feels and why I love her so. I knew that if only he could meet me, he would fall in love with me. And I could be his sweet and innocent puppy love, young love. In fifth grade, Susan Krause's mom took Susan and me to see the Osmond Brothers at Public Hall in downtown Cleveland. I wore purple velvet hot pants. Purple was Donnie's favorite color, and hot pants were short shorts. And I was certain that he would see me up there in the bleacher in those purple shorts, and he would insist that his handlers bring me down so that he could meet me. I screamed for the whole show. My heart was bursting with excitement to meet Donny Osmond in person, to see him. I wanted him so bad, it hurt. I yearned for him. My feelings for Donny opened up my heart and gave me a safe place to practice being in love. Growing up, I spent a lot of time with my Hungarian grandma, baking in the kitchen. 
while the radio played gypsy violin music. We danced the chardash. It's kind of like the Hungarian polka. It was fast and fun and full of life. And while we were dancing, we weren't young and old. We were wild Hungarian gypsy women. As my grandmother got older, no matter how weak she seemed, every time she heard that violin music, her eyes lit up, and I could see that she still had that gypsy spirit in her heart. In junior high school, I hung out with a band called White Heat, and they played Mott the Hoople, David Bowie, Elton John, Lou Reed. Pete Bell was the drummer, and we had a tortuous romance through my teens. He taught me all about his favorite musicians. He loved all things English, new wave, and avant-garde. Our song was Kooks by David Bowie. <laughs> Will you stay in a lover's story? If you stay, you won't be sorry, cause soon you'll grow. So take a chance on a couple of kooks hung up on romancing. It was a simple song, but it was hopeful and romantic. That song made me feel like our love was true and that we would be together forever. If it wasn't for him, I might not have ever discovered Suxi and the Banshee, or Grace Jones, or Nina Hagen. David Bowie's music gave me the most comfort. His lyrics sparked my imagination. We all loved Ziggy Stardust, and we all wanted to meet that star man waiting in the sky. Bowie understood the chicha changes we were going through. Thank you, David Bowie, and thank you, Pete. In the early 90s, I was in my early 30s, and the acting career I had moved to LA to create was not happening the way I had envisioned. And as I was driving to interview for yet another bartender job, I saw this cool place called Creative Kids. I was curious about it. So I went in and I met the owner. I had Quang with me, a little boy from Vietnam who I spent a lot of time with. I told the owner, Here's my resume. She hired me on the spot. <laughs> I had the guitar, so all I had to do was learn the latest kids songs, and I was on my way. Over the course of the next two years, I became Teacher Susie. And I found that I was a natural. This job was a way for me to use my years of voice training and acting training with my love of singing and my newfound love for young kids. Hey, it wasn't Broadway, but I was still performing, and the audience hugged me after every show. <laughs> Music has always been there for me, it, as a young girl in a family that didn't always feel safe. As that isolated, deep-thinking, highly sensitive child living in the projects, music took me to a place where I felt special, important, talented. While sitting and thinking can make me feel terrible and take me down never-ending spirals of depression, singing lifts me up. It takes me to a place where I feel different, better, okay, and sometimes even blissful. When I'm singing for children or seniors or my cat, anybody, <laughs> I feel alive. I love to sing, and I love to sing in front of an audience. In my own little corner, in my own little room, I can be whatever I want to be. Goodbye, you can say hasta luego, so long, see, see you later. I want to see you real soon again, my friend, see, see, maybe tomorrow. You are my special amigo. I want to see you real soon again, my